You're listening to Fragmented, the podcast that delves deep into the fragments of the soul, mind and life to promote self-reflections and change. With your host, Kiran, aka The Heart's Fragments. Check out our website, thefragmentedpodcast.com to learn more, to read our blog or get in touch. Assalamu alaikum, may peace and blessings be upon you all. I pray that you're in the best of health and faith, inshallah. Now, seeing as it's my first episode, I'd like to kind of jump into what what this podcast is and what the plans are and the intentions are. So, usually, when I have an idea like this, it takes me a long time to put it together. But with this podcast, I remember thinking, if I did actually bring this idea to life, what would I call it? And subhanAllah, it instantly came to me fragmented you know by definition the word fragment means a small part broken off or separated from something i use google dictionary for this <laughs> we don't use wikipedia around here so i wanted to use that in the context of ourselves we talk about being one but the reality is that there's many different parts of us we are a fragmented species and we must work to truly acknowledge understand and kind of sort these fragments into what does or what doesn't serve us, what we keep or what le- what we let go of. If a thing doesn't serve us, we must work to remove it, but that's really hard work. Like, we go through so much in life that shapes us and forms this lens which we stay with, but sometimes our lens needs adjusting, sometimes it needs to be changed completely or strengthened because it doesn't fit our sight anymore. We can't see in the sharpest, most defined way that it's possible for us to see in. And I know I do share reflections and poetry, videos and whatnot on my Instagram, which is Hearts Fragments. And you guys are always so supportive with what I do. May Allah bless you. But I guess what I wanted to do was create a separate platform to help us do that, to help us be more self-aware and adopt this habit of reflecting weekly, I guess, with this podcast. I wanted to expand it a little. So as well as the podcast, we'll be doing blogs and the content Everything can be accessed through our website, thefragmentedpodcast.com, where you can also get in touch if you have any questions, suggestions, or if you'd like to see anyone in particular on the podcast and let us know. I look forward to walking this journey with you, and I'm excited to see where it takes us and how we will grow, inshallah. I really hope it serves as beneficial to you. And if so, I request your du'as in return, and your support is always appreciated. So let's move on to today's topic seeing as Ramadan has just ended I thought it would be good to reflect on that I'll share a few things that Ramadan taught me this year it was it was definitely a different experience a unique experience and if I'm honest I felt low knowing that during Ramadan we'll be in lockdown I didn't know how it would go maybe things will get worse and it's like I was constantly thinking this is it I can guarantee that this will be the most difficult Ramadan ever. And <laughs> how foolish was I to think that? You know, who am I to determine the future when all of it is in the hands of the greatest one? So for me, I wanted to focus on my intentions because, you know, you know, I was tired. I was tired of doing things and not feeling as much as I could have felt in my heart. Tired of mindless worship. So I tried not to impose too much on myself that in the end it's only going to leave me drained. Because I feel like most of us walk into Ramadan with these unrealistic expectations. We think that as soon as Ramadan comes, we can instantly switch into these really good Muslims overnight by increasing our physical worship by tenfolds, rather than trying to just increase our presence and align our intentions. And we don't truly... I'm speaking for myself when when I say this. I haven't truly planned what I wanted from Ramadan in all the other years that, you know, Alhamdulillah, I've experienced Ramadan and what I wanted to change within myself that will stay with me for a longer time and actually help me be consistent in my journey to Allah rather than for 30 days straight do so many physical acts and drop them straight after Ramadan leaves or straight after we walk out of Ramadan. So, th- so, so this year I wanted to focus on that be intentional with my worship and remember that knowledge is the basis of faith as well so alhamdulillah it was a great time for that it was a great time for seeking knowledge and as well as that i feel like 
Ramadan completely changed my relationship with the Quran. I realized that there's a difference between just reciting the Quran with the intent to finish it in 30 days and reciting it with intent, reciting it with the translation to understand why it is from the words of Allah that I'm reciting because there's there's verses that are easy to understand, made easy to understand for us and there's verses that are a bit more difficult to understand but there are many verses that we can understand and take things from if not every single one of them so what I've done and I guess I can say a tip for us all even after Ramadan is reciting the Quran with the translation and with every read write down or take notes of a specific verse or verses that interested you that made you curious or resonated with you and really reflect on it take some reflections on it literally write the ayah down in English or um, the reference or whatnot. write some gems that you derived from that write your own thoughts that you can take from that verse or those verses and also try to implement it in your life try to reflect on how you can implement that specific ayah into your life so doing that it taught me how imperative it is to have a connection with the Quran to really make it your best friend have you ever noticed while reading the Quran you genuinely feel a lot lighter like everything feels so light I don't know if that makes sense like the recitation becomes easier your heart just flows with it and I can honestly say that quantity is better sorry quality is better than quantity with worship not the other way around and that's probably that's probably the biggest thing Ramadan taught me that it's better to do less with intent than to do so many acts of worship mindlessly just like like a robot just doing the actions and also I feel like this Ramadan was actually it was like a mirror to me it showed me my ugliness it made me reflect on my character it made me see my own impurities and that's hard it's really really hard sitting with yourself and knowing these are parts of me these are parts of my soul that aren't pretty the things that nobody sees that Allah sees um, and that are there when you're alone <clears throat> but no one but nobody else sees it people think they know us maybe they know us externally maybe they know our exterior and I guess some of our interior but I don't think people really know us people know parts of us and even the goodness they see in us is a, you know we could say it's a reflection of them and this is something actually one of my closest friends she does one of my good friends your mother bless and reward her and elevate her ranks she whenever I compliment her or praise her or, you know say anything good she she tends to just say you know that's a reflection of you and, and I find that beautiful and she gifted me this book that I wanted as well it's called The Tree of Being by Ibn Arabi and I read in that as well that when someone compliments you when someone says good things you should you should see it as a reflection of them alone and um, it's a reflection of the goodness in them and you know I'm, I guess that's a way to keep us humble as well keep us in check <laughs> put us back in our place but alhamdulillah, it's a really nice mindset to have. And although, like I said, it's really, really hard sitting with yourself and um, those parts of you, there's a lot of beauty in it. It's important because our character, it outlines the fundamentals of our iman. Our character is the backbone. It made me really sit with myself and realise the ways in which I was reacting internally and externally to the people around me. The actions which weren't in alignment with I guess what Allah wants for us as believers those were parts of me which stopped me from becoming my better self it hindered my growth which I was this you know this advocate of yeah I had these characteristics and this mirror that was held up to me showed me what I really needed to change it's almost like it was saying here this is you this is your true reality and that's so important because, you know, that concept of tafakkur in Islam, you know, reflection, it only allows us to reconnect and become our best self. Reflection only allows us to grow and become better. So if anything, 
although my Ramadan wasn't packed with so much physical worship there's a there's a quote there's a saying that one moment of reflection is better than 70 years of worship and in times like this it really it really hits you that re- without reflection we kind of we don't move as as well as we can we don't learn as much as we can so aside from those realities the food was good in ramadan <laughs> some beautiful food mashallah and i got to spend some time with my siblings alhamdulillah although at times we wanted to bite each other's heads off but that's okay and you know i can honestly say that this was the best ramadan i've had because of the many reality checks that i needed to see and even though it was spent in lockdown i genuinely wouldn't have it any other way this was such a blessed ramadan i'm so grateful for it and having said all that i do feel like ramadan went too fast but it reminds me that it was a temporary guest and we should honor every time it visits us and i remember the night before eid day i was secretly hoping eid won't be tomorrow <laughs> because i wanted another day even though i knew it would be tomorrow but you know just one more day but seeing here makes me reflect on that wish of having one more day this life itself is like a fleeting moment in reality you know we've lived quite quite some years some more than others alhamdulillah i've, I've managed to live 20 i've come this far <laughs> for some people that's nothing for some people that's a lot um but i thank him because that feels like so long but imagine on that day you know on that last day just like when Ramadan is leaving us, we want another day, we'd want another day in this world, just one more day, and these years I'll feel like one moment, we think, we'll think, we didn't have time, we'd say we didn't have time, let us go back for one more day, let us go back so we can rectify our ways, you know the truth is we do have time, we have time now, and it's a sad reality that it takes 11 months of waiting for many of us to utilize that time and invest in our spiritual states if anything this should be an eye opener this time that we're living in so many people have passed from this virus the graveyards are filled with people who planned for Eid and just passed who planned for this Ramadan and just passed may Allah accept them as martyrs and elevate their ranks and you know subhanAllah there was that plane crash in Karachi recently in the very last days of Ramadan and these families were actually going to see their families for Eid celebrations you know how heartbreaking is that to know that these people were on the way they were so so close and that's it just just it, it was all over in no one no one knew it was going to happen no one could have imagined that none of them knew that this was going to be their last they wouldn't even reach Eid they won't even reach their families you know it's upsetting but if anything it should make us reflect on death often that death can come to us at any time any place any state that we're in you know whether it's in sujood or whether it's in whatever other state whatever's written for us so that should motivate motivate us to do to be our best at all times ramadan is over now unfortunately and we have to wait another 11 months and only God knows if we will reach that. But here's news for us all. We can still work on our spiritual states. So inshallah, may we take out of Ramadan the practices we implemented within it. If we can stay on top of our prayers every day, what makes us think we can't carry that on after Ramadan? If we can stay awake every night for suhoor, what makes us think we can't wake up for one hour in the night for the hajjud prayer and use that time for deep reflection you know, tafakkur, the time in which Allah comes down to see which of his servants are asking from him, you know, who is turning to me with their brokenness so I may heal them, so I may respond to them and hear their du'as, who is taking their time out for me, who is getting out of bed while the whole world is sleeping and getting up and performing their wudu and moving to the prayer to speak to me, to turn to me, who is doing that? I thought the Ramadan blues for sure but it's good to remember that he's always with us whether or not Ramadan is there wherever we are, whatever state we're in the the one who we worship during Ramadan is always there Ramadan was like a, a boost a booster kind of thing which 
allowed us to increase in our worship but let us do that for the rest of the 11 months inshallah and remember consistency is key and quality over quantity what do you miss about ramadan and how are you maintaining your worship and how do you feel after ramadan is over what are your goals for the rest of the year let me know by commenting on the episode one post on our instagram at fragmented podcast underscore or tweet anything you found interesting from this whether it be a quote or even a reflection of yours from today's podcast and tag the twitter page so we can retweet it at fragmented underscore pod and if you haven't already check out the blog on our page on making the most of the months after ramadan which fits in well with this podcast so i pray this episode was of benefit feel free to drop your feedback and get in touch with what or who you'd want to see on the podcast and as this was my first episode forgive me for any shortcomings and please note that all good is only from allah and any mistakes and bad are from myself join us on our next episode where hopefully i'll be joined by my first guest but inshallah until next time take care stay safe eat cake Assalamu alaikum.